Okay then, lots of questions about turning deer antlers. Right then, as you can probably imagine, I get asked a lot of questions about the stuff I do and the way I do it. Right. Uh, what I'm going to try and do over the next couple of videos is to answer those questions. Right. Um, for this one, I'm going to try and answer the questions that I got on turning deer antler. Right. Uh, right. Now, this is already, I already have this mounted. And so there's no sense in going through the stuff I've already gone through. So what I will do, if you want to find out about drilling them and stuff, is I'll leave a link uh, up there to, no, oh, excuse me, to a video I did where I went through drilling deer antler and stuff, right? Uh, some of the questions I ask, I especially get asked questions about finishing uh, deer antler and why I do it the way I do it, right? Uh, I also get asked questions about turnings and how to turn, how to cut it, how, all that kind of stuff, right? Now, with deer antler, um, what you have to remember is what you're cutting is bone, right? Now, what I've done is I've set up the macro camera just there. I don't actually know if it's in shot or not from this camera or that camera. Um, because I was asked specifically about cutting and angles and that kind of stuff and i hope that camera is pointing in the right way there's no screen on this macro camera so i kind of have to guess right now you need razor sharp tools right uh one of the questions i get asked is about the smell right you can completely mitigate the smell to where it's not noticeable the problem that you get with turning deer antler and you get the smell often is they're too fresh right you have to leave a deer antler for a couple of years right uh before you can get them now all of my deer antler comes from natural drop uh from the national park over here in ireland the one in killarney and uh i'll get them and they get thrown into a shed for a couple of years the season off right um as I said, what you're cutting is bone, and you have to remember that, right? So I will turn it at my normal pen turning speed at 2000, because that's what I'm comfortable doing at it. Right? I will turn on the overhead, because I forgot to do it. Right? Now, the whole trick with deer antler is small bites, now, especially when you're at the start. Now, I hope that camera's picking this up, or this one, right? You can see a shadow there. If you happen to try and cut too much off of that, what's causing that shadow line, the, the antler's gonna shatter. So you've really gotta be careful, especially at the start, and you have to be patient to, get rid of that now hopefully the macro camera can see this i'm not riding a bevel right what i'm doing right is i'm kind of scraping right now you can see there by the stuff that's coming off this right if it was wood they'd be shavings but because it's not they're not right the angle I'm getting at right now, I'm going to show this to the micro camera and hopefully it'll pick it up. Right, if I was riding a bevel, I would be there. Right, what I'm actually doing is that. That would be a scrape, right, where I'm introducing the cutting edge at a 90 degree angle to it, right, which I'm not doing. I'm about halfway between a scrape and a bevel cut, right. It's, I won't say it's an easier way of cutting handler. 
I just personally find it easier to control. Right. Now if you have a look at that, those cuts are smack on. They're smooth. There's no ridge lines or anything in it. It's n and it's not because I'm riding a bevel. It's because I'm doing it at a steady pace. Right? I'm matching my travel movement with the speed the lead's going. Now that's nice, so hopefully we can keep a bit of that natural in. You never know. Right, the pen I'm doing, sorry, is a slimline click. Right. Now that I've got to there, I will treat it as normal and just turn down to the bushing on that side, turn down to the bushing on this side. Right, now what I'm doing is out of uh, antler, I only turn one part at a time, right? Now we've got to start pulling the finishing cut into this. Now you can see on that, that there is a shaving coming off it. Even though I'm not riding a bevel. Right. The angle of presentation is at about a this is at about a 45 degree angle. Right. Now I'm gonna pull cut with a kind of a scrape just to make that nice and even. I'm very gently trying to get that little bump there out of it. But yet again, it's not a full scrape. The blade that's touching this is not at a right angle to it. I did manage to keep a little piece in, Grant. Right, now, there's a slight, I don't like that shape there on this end. So yet again, I'm gonna do it with a pull. Just it even a little bit. Right then, that's basically all I can tell you about cutting. It's not a bevel cut, well this is the way I do it, anyway. Not a bevel cut, right? Not a scrape. It's kind of halfway in between, and you've got to have light hands. You need the tool. Your tool control has to be pretty good to do it. Right? And you get decent cuts on them. They won't split on you. They won't shatter on you. Right. Now sanding is the same as anything else. Right. There's no difference in the way you sand it. Right. Um. It's just, you sand it as normal, right. Now this week, there's no Yorkshire grip bit this week because I actually forgot to do one. Right, but don't worry, they'll be back next week. Uh, I've just been trying to catch up on stuff because I'm only back and I basically, I've been up to my eyes and I didn't get a chance to do a Yorkshire grip bit. So I apologize for anybody who's been waiting for that, but there isn't one in this week's video, right. So, as I said, it's just sand as normal with these things. Right, now I'll try and answer those finishing questions. Right, as you've seen there, sanded it as normal, and then I put uh, sand, I cleaned it off with mitts and put sanding sealer on it. Right, now I'm going to use standard Yorkshire grit on it. And I'm just going to grit it as I normally would anything else. Next, I'm going to go with Yorkshire Grit Microfine. Now, this is where I got, this is where I really started to ask questions. 
right that's pretty shiny right but what i do as a last stage is i use a metal polish polish called brasso right now like any metal polish it's an abrasive and it actually abrades down i don't know what it is exactly but i think i read somewhere it's about four thousand grit right um but what it does to the piece right is after you use it you do not have to put a finish on it because you're actually finishing the material itself rather than putting a finish on it right which will last longer the shine will last longer it'll be a better deeper shine because you're not depending on a finish to stay right you're actually finishing the piece itself and it uh it, ju it just holds the shines better as i'm doing this i'm trying to remember all the questions i was asked i think i'm not getting most of them right. now you'll see that it's coming in hopefully the cameras are picking it up the depth of shine that's in that now right buff it off right the shine depth that's in that now you won't get that if you put a finish on it right you won't get that depth of shine right there's nothing not to react with the antler to change its color you've literally just finished the antler itself right so that's the first part done that's how you do that's my way of doing a piece that doesn't have any marrow in it right now the other part of this as far as i know does have marrow in it right and i'll answer the questions about that when i'm doing it but it'll be a lot quicker than that first one because uh, i won't have to go through all that right here's the second part now i think there's some marrow just there right and the first part is going to be the same so i'll just fly through that bit and get it down to where i can answer the questions Yeah, there is a little bit of marrow just there that we're going to have to deal with. Right, not much, but you'll get the idea of what I'm doing. I go into this a little bit more in... I think it's that first video when I'm talking about... Um, how to drill them. Right, now what I want to do is I want to get some thin CA and put it on that where the marrow was showing right, a little bit there too right and then while it's still wet i want to start to sand it because what i want is the sanding dust to go into that marrow and fill any holes that are there See the way that sanding dust is coming off? I want that to go in and the CA that's in the marrow will hold it in place. back to wet to dry sanding again
Right then, how we got left to do is put this thing back together, uh, together, and we're done. Pick a nice spot. Just there. Keep that piece of marrow smack in the middle, if I can. So that marrow's in the middle. Okay. Crimp it down. Center round. Piece there. Yeah. The marrow to lead into the stained part. And the tip. Cap off, make sure that's seated properly. There it is. Now we just put it together. All right, let's make sure the skinny end of the long spring goes on first. Head on. And there we have a deer antler slimline click. These are very popular with the ladies. Uh, they're, they're light enough um, but it's just uh, as I said I hope that's answered the questions I got about antler if anybody has any more just ask me and I'll see if I can answer them for you um, but it's a pretty pen I do like doing these because they uh, as I said they're pretty pens when they're done so if you like that one if you wouldn't mind leaving a like on the video and I'll see you in the next one.